welcome. Today we're going to be using the slider type so we can get numeric input from our user because um, when we're talking about a text field, we get string values. We want to get numbers out of it, so we use the slider as the default way to grab numeric input from our user. And so we're going to talk about how we can make that happen using both doubles and ints, so we can use that to grab information from our user and use it inside our application. This is just a standard Swift UI view, so I just created one right here. It's called slider demo view. You can make your own as well. And so as you can see right here, we have in our data member section, I've got three binding values that we have to work with so I can tie the values directly so that when they change, those changes are reflected directly in the view because of the power of the app binding property wrapper. And so I have a binding var for slider int value, slider double value, and range double value with um, int double double as the types of those respectively. I have a double range that is a closed range of type double, so I can have that range of values. So it's um, from 3.0 up to and including 6.0. And then I have an int max of 100 and min of negative 100, both of 0.0 because they have to be decimal values, but we're using them as the maxes for the int and min, which we'll talk about that in just a minute. So let's take a look at the double one that we have working with first. And so the basic one right here is the basic double value right here. I have a text right there. It's referencing the slider double value in a non-bound form because it just displays the value that's currently inside it. And I use, as always, the dot accessibility label so I can have that information so I can actually retrieve that value from it so I can see exactly what we're working on as we're using a value so it has, makes our app accessible and testable as well. And then my slider has the bound value using that dollar sign prefix right here of slider double value. And I have it as a range of 0.0, .0 up to and including 10.0. So it's an inclusive range from 0 to 10 on that. And my step is by 0 0.5. Now you'll notice in my preview, my uh, supplied value I'm sending to that is 6.28. That'll be ignored on that because I'm only changing values between the 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, etc. because I'm using that 0.5 um, there on that range of values with that. And so that's where that range will actually be applied to. So whenever I change it, it will only follow that pattern. The next two parameters are the minimum value label and the maximum value label. And that's how I can identify what is going to be at the left and right ends of the spectrum for this. So my min value is going to be, in this case, 0. My max is 10. And in this case, I just did some keyboard matching of SDA and ASD just to throw it in there to see how you can see how it works. But you can see how to do that better as the next two examples as we go through that. That last bit right here is an anonymous closure that goes at the end of that. And that's for the label right there we need for accessibility purposes. And so you just put a little text inside there. It has to have something there for the label property. Or you can actually make a label type in your app. But I just use the anonymous closure. It makes it a lot nicer for that. And I just do an accessibility for label for double slider because as you can see, that doesn't show up anywhere on the actual screen. It's just there for behind the scenes work. So we have that right there. And so when I actually look at the application right here, and we run it, I start off at 6.28. As I slide, I go back up and down by 0.5 across that range of values that I specified. And by not having to specify it, I just have to figure it out by sliding all the way over it. So it's from 0.0, .0 up to and including 10.0. So giving that range on the actual uh, min and max lot labels would be a much better approach for that. But I just threw some keyboard matching there so you can see how it works and why it's better to actually give the user information on what you're doing. The next one we have is our range double. And so it uses the range double value we have defined right up here as well. And again, it has the accessibility label and value for that. And the only difference right here, we have that rangeable value. It looks just like that for the bound value. And I'm using the range right here. So I'm using a variable to reference that range. So I can specify it up here of closed range of type double. So it's just like doing this one right here, but explained as a variable. So you might be able to define that from some other resource and then use that as a variable inside here to make it so it's more useful for you. I know, crazy stuff. And then the step on this is by 0 0.1. Since I'm starting that off at pi, obviously it's not going to work very well. So we'll go up to 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4. And this is going for up and down between 3 to 6 on that. And I'm using in my text value right here, as you can see on the range for the min and max labels, I have the double range dot lower bound specified by these um, percent to f. So I do a 0 0.2 to, um, decimal values of specification on that. So I have 3.0 right here. But I'm not using it on the actual range double value itself. So we can see that. And so when I run the actual application, we go over here. I go from 3.1 to 3.10. There we go, all the way up and down through that range of values so that I can work with that. So that's how we work it with that. Now to do with ints, it's a little bit more involved. The first thing we have to do is we can't just use an int in here because it has to require a double value. So instead I make a custom type, and we'll take a look at that right here. And so my custom type is called my int from double binding. That's how I'm going to make it so I can actually combine an int and a double so I can reference them together. And so inside the int from double binding, I have a int value that is a binding of type int and a double value, which is a binding of type double. So I can have those two bound values as the default what's inside this object or this struct. And then inside my init for that, I have an exterior name of nothing and my interior name of int value because it makes a lot of sense to use the interior name for that. And so self int value equals int value, standard approach for initializing that. However, when I'm initializing the double value of this struct, my self double value is going to be a binding of type double because that's what I'm working with. And I initialize it using the get set properties. So my get is assigned a closure of double and passing it the int values wrap value because when you're talking about a binding to extract the data out of that, you do the variable name then dot wrap 
that value, to extract that from there. And that's how I create my double when I'm getting the value of it. And then when I'm using the setter, I'm going to do int value dot wrap value is be assi I'm assigning whatever's passed to that as an int version of the default parameter. So whatever double value is passed in in dollar sign zero will get turned into an int, and that'll be assigned to the wrapped value of int value. So I can have that um, bound value directly linked in for that. And so the way that we use that inside the struct is pretty easy. We just go over here to the struct itself, and I have my int version right here with the slider value. And on my slider, I create an int from double binding, and I reference the bound value of that int value from up here in my data member section, and I ask it for its double value, so I can retrieve the double value out of that. And then on my int, I have my int min and my int mats for my range, using the plus or minus 100. And then I have my step as 1.0. My minimum label is getting the string version of the int of int min, and my maximum value label is the string version of the int of int max. So I take that int version, um, out of it by taking the 100.0 negative 100.0, turn it to an int, so 100 and a negative 100, and then turn it to a string, so I don't have to worry about any parens or commas or anything like that. And we have it right there, again, with that standard text uh, label being attached as an accessibility modifier for it. And when I run the app on this, for the int version, as you can see, I slide back and forth, negative 46, positive 46, positive 40, so it only does the int value of that directly from there. So it's a great way to use an int value as a slider. I hope this is a helpful way to use sliders inside your app. Again, all you have to do, you just have to go ahead and make a data member that's of type binding on that. So you use that property wrapper so you can use it. You specify the bound value in the parameter for the value of that. And then if you want to use an int on it, we use an int from double binding. We do a combined struct on that so we can get the int and double combined values out of that and reflect that inside our application and we can go from there. I hope this is helpful for you. Cheers. See you next time and have a great day. Bye-bye.